apple, Garmin, apple, Garmin, apple, Garmin, apple or Garmin. Which watch is the best for runners? It's a bit of a spoiler, isn't it? Now, Apple comes from the lifestyle angle, but recently it's delved deeply into the world of sports. Meanwhile, Garmin clearly comes from a sports background, but it's starting to build out its lifestyle features. I've owned one of each of these bad boys. I had an Apple Watch for about two years, and now I've had a Garmin for about three months. So if you're like, actually, Koros is way better, it might be dupe, I don't know. But this is just Apple versus Garmin. So this is my full and honest review of my experience with these two watches as they appeal to runners. So I'm really gonna focus on the features that are just relevant to running. I'll go through the running features, accuracy, usage, battery life, the additional features, integration, cost. Now this is my first ever tech review, so let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you enjoy, chuck me a cheeky like and subscribe. This video is definitely not sponsored, but it could be. So if you're from Apple, or Garmin, Koros, or even Polar. Please, send me one of your watches and I'll review that next. Let's go. First up, which models am I comparing? Apple Watch SE GPS 40mm rubber sports loop. Garmin Phoenix 7S Sapphire Solar 47mm grey with a black band. So the Apple Watch includes several modes within their own native workout app, whereby you can do running, indoor running, cycling, indoor cycling, HIIT workouts, yoga, etc, etc. You can also choose to build your own running workout within the workout app itself on the watch. For example, when you're doing a tailored interval session on the track. You can also just load on the Strava app and track your running that way. Now Garmin really loves data. It offers you things like training effect, workout load, recovery recommendations, workout recommendations, VO2 max, performance condition. Like Apple, it offers several different workout options. And like Apple, you can build your own workout and sync it onto the watch. Now both watches, of course, track time, thank God, distance, pace, heart rate, elevation, all the fundamentals that you need to track during your runs. So which one wins in this department? Well, I think if you really love analytics, you can dig a lot deeper with Garmin. For me, I love numbers, but the basic things like pace and heart rate is all I really need. I turn off a lot of the extra Garmin updates, particularly after the performance condition one kept telling me that my performance is decreasing. It was really rude. A critical part for me in using the watch is building my own speed workout every Tuesday so I can use it on the track, but both watches offer this. So no tiebreaker there. Overall for this section, it's a draw. We're not off to a very helpful start. So what about the actual accuracy of those metrics? Well, I'm not gonna lie, Apple can be a little rough on the details. Apple is not 100% accurate with some of the key data. This is my experience anyway. I'm talking about things as simple as distance and therefore pace. So in my marathon training last year, I was running with a group. I was the only one wearing an Apple Watch. And every time we got to the turnaround point, without a doubt, I'd be the last one to hit the turnaround kilometers. They would say, is everybody at 15? And I would always go, Oh, 14.8. Le who, the her. Every single park run that I did with my Apple Watch, I came up short. And that's not all. On the track, 400 meters kind of has to be 400 meters, right? The interval sessions that I do on the track is one of the most important workouts of the week for me. And also happens to be my favorite. And I need the measurement to be perfect. It can kind of be forgiven when you're running 5K or 30K. I don't mind doing an extra 100 meters, really. But on 400 meter track, when you've got the exact pace that you want to hit, five, 10 meters off is making a big difference. For me, I'm always getting 390 meters, 395, but I know it's a 400 meter track. Now Garmin is spot on. A 400 meter track is 400 meters. Park run is 5K and my long runs, I'm in sync with everybody else. Now I do have to note for completeness, that I have had some troubles with the Garmin with the heart rate just, just a couple of times. I think these couple of times were due to a couple of things. One is if I wear the band 
just a little bit too loose and it has a little bit of movement on my wrist, my heart rate will go funky. The other thing is if it's raining and I get rain in between the watch and my wrist, it goes a little bit funky. For example, I was in Melbourne running to a park run. So this is a very casual jog. Usually my heart rate should be about 125. For one of my splits, my watch said 173. And then my Garmin told me afterwards, we've now recalculated your max heart rate. So it threw it out. So this accuracy of the metrics is a big one for me. If we put to the side those little occasions where there's those heart rate issues with the Garmin, Garmin is my winner here. Now I believe the iPhone operating system, iOS, is the best operating system kind of across all tech. Apple designed it for their phones, obviously, and then they rolled it out to their iPad and now a version to their watch. So if you're an Apple user, the iOS that's on the Apple Watch is very familiar, it's very pleasant, very easy to use. It's aesthetically pleasing, it's colorful, touch screen based, plus a side button and something called a digital crown. Essentially, navigating around is like using your iPhone. But for running, if you're a sweaty boy like me with sweaty palms and sweaty fingers, using the touch screen on the watch can be a bit of a nightmare. Now, most of the time in training, it doesn't really matter, but when you're racing or you're going for a PB, having to swipe and touch screen to stop can lose you like between two and five seconds, and that kind of sucks. Now, on the other hand, the Garmin operating system looks like it was made in the 90s. I don't know if you ever played with Tamagotchi, but that's what this fella looks like. So it's super basic. It doesn't have lovely icons or pretty colors. It has five single press buttons and several scroll through menus. Weirdly, the buttons for me aren't very intuitive. I always end up pressing seven more buttons than I should to get anywhere. But when I'm running, go and stop on the same button. And that is so simple and so straightforward. It's like an old stopwatch. Now onto style for one second. Apple looks good. It's sleek, it's nicely designed. I had the rubber band and that was really comfortable. And you can wear the Apple Watch with casual clothes and it kind of fits in and looks good. Now Garmin is chunky and it looks like a runner's watch. It kind of sticks out if you're wearing casual clothes. And I also find the band isn't quite as comfy. So here you have to think about, do you want a prettier format and a prettier watch itself? Or do you want the bit more goofy, old school, no frills mamma gemma? Overall, interface, comfort, style, we're going Apple. Utility, we're going Garmin. So this one's a draw. Now with all due respect, this one's a bit of a whitewash. Now Apple Watch will claim it does a lot more holistically as a lifestyle watch. And that might be fair enough. It claims that a day's battery is reasonable. Maybe so. This is a funny part. It offers a lot of sleep tracking stuff, but I never had the battery life to wear it for a day and a night. I had to charge it every night. So I never ever got to use the sleep tracking stuff. Garmin actually remembers that fundamentally it's just a watch and it should last for at least a few days. Now, when I first got it and I charged it up fully, it actually told me battery remaining 11 days. But in fairness, that's 11 days if you don't use it for anything and you just use it to look at the time. And can you imagine if we just use watches for that? <laughs> but really, if you run every day like I do and, and maybe go to the gym and do whatever else, or maybe listen to music occasionally through it, we're talking it's only gonna last for about maybe four days, that's probably how often I have to charge it, give or take. But at the end of the day, if your watch says, oh, I'm on low battery, and it means it can still last for a two hour run and a gym session, i.e. this is Garmin, you've got a winner. So we'll go into the music part first, because a lot of runners listen to music. I certainly do. Apple allows you to sync up with your Apple Music. That's what it prefers. It also allows you to sync to Spotify. It works pretty good. I think syncing is pretty slow. I've got no idea why, but luckily I'm a patient sort of guy. But speaking of patience, I too often with the Apple Watch just had trouble launching the music off my watch. I think it somehow gets caught up in trying to be a remote for your phone. It still has some troubles connecting now and again. In fact, I had a case where I was in the starting shoot for a race. This is City to Surf and I'm ready to go. I've got a fire playlist lined up for this 14K run, right? I put it in my ears, we're about to start in about 30 seconds, and it doesn't work and my music doesn't come through. That killed me. 
Luckily for me, I'm a runner who doesn't really mind running with music or without, but I prefer that not to be the decision of my watch. By the way, side note, when I run, I use Beats by Dre in-ear headphones, and I absolutely love them. For a big-eared fella like me, they're the only earphones that properly stay in. Garmin, easy and faster to sync with Spotify. It's very reliable and works pretty much all the time. Probably maybe two to 5% of the time it becomes a bit glitchy when I'm running with the actual music, a little bit annoying, but it's always reliable in terms of coming through the headphones and actually playing my music. Contactless payments. Now, how is this relevant to running? Well, I run, I don't carry anything else except my watch. And often after a run, I'll go get a coffee and I need to pay for it. So there's a link for you. Apple does it better. Double click the button and you go a bit bitty bop and you paid for the thing. For some reason, Garmin's is another, you know, 17 button sequence and you've got to go digging in Alibaba's cave to find the hidden treasure and then eventually you'll bit of a nightmare. Notifications and messages. I think this goes to the overall lifestyle versus running point. So Apple definitely has the lead on how your watch works with your other devices like your iPhone. So if you're getting notifications here and you leave your phone, you go to the toilet, you get your notification on your watch and you can reply and send an emoji, blah, blah, blah. Garmin, you try getting a notification, looks like you've received a fax. You beep, 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 have beep, 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 receive beep, beep. For me, I actually turn off the notifications on both watches. I don't like getting notifications on my watch. So that point's actually a non-starter. This section, Garmin just wins just due to the music. Apple should win this section based on its app because Apple is an app making company. The Apple Watch app kind of sucks. Not at all clear, and in fact, it's kind of arbitrary which settings it decides is gonna go into the Apple Watch app on your phone and which one's gonna to go to the actual Apple Watch settings on your watch. Uh, integration with Strava is pretty good. You finish your run and then once you're back with your phone, you just press sync and then you gotta cross your fingers because I did have a few occasions where it would sync and then disappear forever. And we all know as runners, if it's not on Strava, did it really happen? And on those occasions, I had to go back out and do the run again. Garmin just decides it's not screwing around with putting Strava on its watch. So you have to use its native app to record your runs. And then it syncs with the Garmin Connect app on your phone, pretty seamlessly. And then you can upload from that to Strava. Again, pretty seamlessly. Three months, I haven't lost any runs. On integration, it's gonna go to Garmin because I'm still salty about those lost runs on the Apple Watch. My beautiful partner and my wonderful sister got me an Apple Watch for my birthday in 2021. So it cost me zero dollars. My loving mother and my legendary brother got me a Garmin watch for my birthday in 2023. So it cost me zero dollars. Yes, I am incredibly lucky. I have the best family and I appreciate you all so much. Now the actual costs, Apple Watch is about $400 and the Garmin watch is like upside of like 12 or 13 hundred dollars. So Garmin is way more expensive. I actually didn't know the cost of a Garmin until I looked it up for this video. I can't believe my mum and my brother spent that much, but that's by the by for now. So you really have to ask, is a Garmin worth like three times as much as an Apple Watch? I'll just leave that there for you. Let's go to the summary. Apple Watch is good, and I think it's gotten even better for running in later models. It's designed beautifully inside and out, it's comfortable and has all the necessary functions for a runner. GPS tracking, listening to music, tailored workouts, and at $400, it's a pretty nifty deal. The Garmin Phoenix is great. It is a runner's watch, so it's not gonna look amazing with a suit or a cocktail dress, but it does look great with short shorts and speed dealers. With its old school interface, but advanced features and functionality, it's really appealing. It's super accurate, and if you love analytics, it's pretty much got everything that you can imagine under the sun. Like it'll measure how many bugs flew into your eyeballs. So I'll leave it there. I hope hearing about my experiences with these two watches helps you make your decision on yours. And if this review made you go, Yep, I'll go with the Koros. Then that's hilarious. Please let me know in the comments below. Have a cracking day, guys. I'm Average Dom Slim, and I will see you next week.